Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. The upheaval that COVID-19 has wrought on income has put housing at risk for many Vermonters. The Champlain Housing Trust has helped thousands to reach their dream of affordable homes and has been a key player to help people keep their homes during these difficult times. It is now leading in the response to a looming housing crisis. My guest today, Brenda Torpy, led the creation of Champlain Housing Trust 35 years ago. And after serving as its leader for three decades, she will be stepping down as CEO at the end of the year, but will continue to work globally as a consultant. Welcome, Brenda. It's so great to have you on the program. Great to see you, Fran. Thank you. So the, the risk of eviction has become a national crisis. How are mm -hmm. Vermont relief funds being deployed for various programs for the homeless, renters, and, and landlords? Yeah, it's a very good question. Vermont has done well, and in fact, we we led amongst our with our housing partners around the state and the housing agencies to help the state early on define, you know, and try to size how much relief funds needed were needed in housing. Uh, for example, for rental relief, based on the numbers and projections we had, uh, mortgage relief, and then to help uh, assist the homeless, not just in an emergency way, but hopefully not to send people back out into camps, you know, once once the real emergency and the motel stays were done. And so once those funds were made available, the legislature passed like 90%, I think, of the value of the ask, the original ask. Mm -hmm. We went to work to help our residents access these, as we have with other programs. So from the get-go, our goal has been keep everybody housed securely and start working on new housing options for those who are homeless. And uh, the first day of the rental program, we helped 200 of our renters who needed it. Uh, all the all the renters who needed it, we helped them apply. The landlord has to apply as well as the resident. And uh, the same, we've had fewer uh, requests in our mortgage program to date, and uh, but we're ready and able. And yeah. if people go on our website, they'll see that's one of the ways we're communicating all the resources and good advice and health tips to people. Yeah. Yeah. But we've also reached out to every residence individually, every resident yeah. in our yeah. portfolio. So uh, a lot you, of different yeah. arms on this. You yeah. hit the ground running. You guys really did and uh, knew what was needed and uh, found out what, what, what was urgent and, and went there. But let's just back up. What, what is a community land trust? How would you describe that to people? quickly help. Yes, uh, community land trust, that's what we are. Uh, I think Vermonters are very familiar with conservation land trusts, and those land trusts have kept our fishing and hunting lands open, uh, wildlife access, conserve farms, that sort of use of, of conserving land. In a community land trust, we take that same approach of land, but for community purposes, and primarily for affordable housing. And the other key to our model is that community is meaningful in community land trust because mm. the, all the housing is managed by people who live in the housing as well as uh, people who live in the region we serve. We serve the three Northwest counties and local government uh, representatives. So our board of directors is always really connected to all the important stakeholders. Uh, we can't get too far afield in our, our approaches. And I think that's very important. The other way community land trust uh, works to be open and transparent to the community is we work through all the, the other service organizations and we partner with everybody, um, other nonprofits and other services so that we can really deliver what's needed. Awesome. So, so you really connect with tenants and communities. Um, how you've expanded your network from Chittenden County, basically, uh, throughout Vermont. Um, so tell us a little bit about how you uh, expanded yeah. and where you're going. Sure. So we originated as the Burlington Community Land Trust in Burlington. And Burlington was the first city to really support this model and say, let's create some resources and policies that support this permanent affordable housing, because that is the way our state can start to build up a good stock of affordable housing to serve citizens. And so they did it first, but soon after in the 80s, the state of Vermont created a state trust fund, Vermont Housing Conservation Board, and they helped start trusts around the state. So there's community land trusts like in the Kingdom, it's a rural edge, and then there's Twin Pines in the Upper mm -hmm. Valley, when the winds are down south. So there are throughout the state community land trust on this model and the state helps support it. So that's how that grew around the state. 
we do provide some specialized services uh, to other CLTs, but they are all independent, local, not-for-profits. And I wanted to add one important thing about this approach. It's such a good Vermont approach because we believe in our local communities and local community control. And in many parts of the state, small communities themselves, the towns, the villages, don't have a lot of staff. We don't have county government. You know, people often say we don't. We have a lot of nonprofits, but we don't have that level of government. So when small communities have needs around affordable housing or preserving a building downtown or that you know improving their village, they can turn to the local nonprofit and get the, that resource and that help. And that's what we do all around the state. Right, and the results, you know, after the financial um, crash, s showed that um, community land trust homeowners were much more successful and free of foreclosures than the, than the market as a whole. That's a remarkable statistic. So why why would you say that is? What's the magic? Yes, and those numbers, <coughs> excuse me, were from community land trusts all around the country. And I didn't explain this, but one of the great unique contributions of community land trust affordable housing is that we can help people buy a home affordably and we can keep that home affordable by we put our investment our grant into the property with the homeowner and they get their own mortgage but it's much more affordable and then if they choose to sell they own it outright but if they choose to sell we recycle that benefit buyer after buyer and those mm. folks take the equity they built up in their mortgage plus a share of market value with them and that's worked really well so you can imagine after the crash so many moderate income people got into home ownership through these subprime instruments and mm -hmm. but our folks get a good mortgage because they do this in, with community support in their trust good home buyer education not only that but once they purchase we don't just cut the ribbon and walk away they're a member of the trust they have access to our resources and we do you know budget counseling and credit counseling we help people through hard times we have affordable loans for repairs we do something called homeowner university and just providing people with the tips about adding value and maintaining your asset. So when people buy a home, people often look at that shared equity and say, well, it's a little less than real home ownership. You can look at it that way. But in other ways, it's home ownership plus because you have that lasting security and support to succeed, which is how you really build wealth over time. Sure. And, and so we were, um, homeowners who bought this way were 10 times less likely to be in foreclosure than the market overall. Not other low income buyers, but the market overall. Wow, so wow. Yeah. that education and really understanding how it all works is also critical. Uh, so Absolutely. do you have a, a sense of how Vermonters are doing in terms of evictions and foreclosures that um, is a current crisis in many places? I know best in our affordable networks because we talk. And uh, so far, uh, there's a mortgage assistance program. We've had a few calls to help people apply for that. In our own portfolio, people are doing okay. Uh, so it has not hit Vermont yet, but I could say in our, what we're looking ahead to is that after the financial crisis, you know, Vermont didn't have a real estate crisis. Our prices stayed high, but it was the economic downturn after, right? For many mm -hmm. years where people, that's when people needed us to protect them from foreclosure. So we expect that the sort of long-term uh, economic challenges that we're going to face coming out of COVID, that's when we're going to start to see uh, people in need. Okay. And we'll be, we're ready. So I'd like to get to, you contributed a chapter recently to a, a, a newly released book called On Common Ground about how community land trust and it, that model has developed into an international movement for housing justice. How did you and Champlain Housing Trust help spread this model globally? Yes, and I just want to mention that one of the co-editors of that book is also a Vermonter, John Davis, living in Burlington. Uh, did a lot of work to pull all of these great stories and information together. Uh, the way we did it is that we had become quite a model in the country because our, we had municipal support, Vermont was supportive, people started to come to see us, and um, we helped to found our national network, now Grounded Solutions Network, and I'm on the board of that. But in 2007, we were contacted by the NGO that, that runs the United Nations uh, World Habitat Award program. And, they recommended we apply because of the innovation of our model and we did and we received the award. And there's a responsibility that goes with that award. We had visitors from 13 countries, every continent here for an entire week and we did site study uh, education. And 
folks went back and started trusts uh, in in England. There's now 100 and over 100 community wow. land trusts. Wow. Uh, there's great land trust in Brussels, and they've started a network throughout Europe. France uh, adopted a national program on our entirely on our model, mm -hmm. our ground lease. Wow. And there's 14 trusts now started a network and, in Canada. Uh, and I've been to all these places and to help support them in their startups. And it all started here. We, we only have a couple minutes, so I do want to get to, um, you know, that, that housing policy has been a key component in the in inequality and in the, in the racial wealth yes. divide that so many people yes. are talking about that now. Yes. Um, how is your movement living up to the early promise of, of equity that you started with 35 years ago? Yes, and we grew out of the civil rights movement. The model is from the 1960s civil rights movement. And we are being true to that in this way. As I explained our home ownership program, you can see that if, if the government would fund home ownership in this way, where it's guaranteed that the benefit goes to those families who have not had the advantage of building up wealth because their parents weren't homeowners, which is much truer of African Americans and white Americans, but it also affects white Americans, that then they, we know that the assistance and subsidy we're giving is getting right to that need. In the last couple of years, 25% of our home buyers have been people of color. Mm. In our national wow. network, we've, uh, we've had that kind of increase since we've consciously said, it's not enough to say we, we, we know we can do this, we need to target those communities that need it. So that is going to be at the forefront. In the foreclosure crisis, uh, when they studied low income home buyers, uh, five years on, 50% of those home buyers had failed in the market and that's because having cheap credit did not help people to get secure housing and our folks were 98 percent still homeowners awesome. so this is the solution to help folks build wealth great let's get them to the website but brenda torpy co-founder and ceo of champlain housing trust thank you so much for joining us um, today i'm going to give that website right now this is um, terrific it's www.getahome.org um, it has housing solutions and education brenda good luck with your retirement um, i know you'll continue to go do great great things thank you so much for joining us today thank you and thank you everybody out there for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard, stay well.